So you are seeing through the Seek Thermal Camera, and you're seeing the heat of everything around you, or at least everything around the camera. This is thermal photography, and it is amazing. I finally got my Seek Thermal Camera, as you can probably already detect by me having a Seek Thermal Camera. And I'm actually, I was expecting it to be very sucky, and I, I thought it would just be one of those things that it would be brain crack, where I I just had to buy it just to, so I I realized how bad the idea was, because if I didn't do it, then I'd be obsessed with the idea. But I was actually very happy with this because, I mean, look at it. It's it's a two hundred and fifty dollar, well, two hundred dollars from Amazon, about twenty dollars or twenty dollars for a two year warranty because it's a good idea to get a warranty and. I paid like $20 for a little extra shipping. It was like $10 tax or whatever. But still, $250 for this, whenever you realize how much energy and how much or how much engineering goes into building the microbolometers, the image chip, because each pretty much each pixel of the image chip is a little thermometer that is raised up off of the silicon wafer by a method of 3D printing, and then they etch away underneath it so it's it's the, each pixel is a thermometer. It detects how much it's heated up by the light going through the lens and onto the image chip. But the, also, the entire process has to be done under a vacuum. So it's started out on a vacuum. It's built on a vacuum. It's etched away in a vacuum. It's sealed up in a vacuum. That chip is still in the same vacuum. So it's just it's a very complex method. So that is it. We as humans only get to see a small sliver of the world around us. We only get to see like a little bit, uh, whatever touches us, whatever we hear in a certain sound range, whatever we can, whatever light hits our eyes in a certain light spectrum with a visible spectrum. Like for instance, the camera that's recording the audio. Because unfortunately, that is one issue that I have with the Seek Thermal Camera is that the app for it doesn't record audio. Also, but they could always up that, update that later. Now, with the Seek Thermal Camera, you get a resolution of 206 by 156, I think. Now, that's pretty small for a camera, but for a microbolometer with 31,000 thermometers on it, I have to say that's actually pretty good because for the price, yeah. Now, it's actually really interesting. Like, I actually have two coats on because I just rode home. It was a bit chilly outside. So this is my, now this is my like plaid or what checker uh, coat that I had. It's kind of like my secondary coat. And this is my purple one, my normal one that I normally wear. But underneath I'm really warm so I can take it off. It's very warm underneath. It's kind of cool. You can get really close. Now, it's very interesting that... Uh, I think it's low wavelength, or I just call it far infrared. Far infrared doesn't pass hardly anything. It passes through and refracts salt. The I think I can't remember the name for the lens in this, and also some other. I think there's some other compound that's almost like a sapphire type thing. It's like super expensive. It's like no one's ever gonna want to afford that. But of course, a lot of things it's opaque. Now, one interesting thing is that it actually can be reflected quite easily by, like, glass and metal. For instance, you look in the garage windows and the garage doors, you can actually see, see the reflections of one of the, one of the light bulbs in the light fixture over there. So, it's actually, it doesn't reflect very well, but it does reflect a little bit, so that's pretty cool. Now, I have a slightly thrown-together battery pack in my electric tricycle, and... I noticed that whenever I took a picture of the trunk that I have, or, or the toolbox that I have all my batteries in, it get it got very hot on one side. Well, I opened it up and I found that there was actually a bad connection. There's a cold solder joint in my battery that I made. It's one of the newer batteries I made only a couple weeks ago. And so basically, I was wanting to have the power being pulled from 12 cells due to a connection break it was only being pulled from four cells, so I was really overworking those four cells, and that could definitely cause a lot of issues. So I fixed that, and I just got my battery pack together, and I just wrote it here, and 
there is really no noticeable temperature difference on it. And that, 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 that's just freaking awesome because you always hear people talking about how lithium batteries get really hot and stuff like that. But I am very adamant that lithium batteries only get hot if you're doing something wrong or if they're bad batteries. And this kind of proves that you can pull like 12 to 20 amps of power from this battery pack, which is a 24 volt, uh, 48 volt, actually 52 volt now, 52 volt, 24 amp hour battery pack, and not increase the temperature hardly at all. And especially whenever I get my other battery pack made that will work in tandem with this one, it will be even more efficient and probably not even raise even half a degree. So a little bit more about the actual video itself. I, I believe the video is uh, 206 by 156 pixels. It's a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Now, of course, I have this sideways because for some reason, when you flip the thing, whenever you flip the camera around to face you, the same side as the, as the, as the LCD, it kind of puts it upside down. So putting it sideways, it's a bit difficult to film. But putting it the right way, then it, it's the right way because it's turned over. Also, I'd have to say that right now it's a little better for vertical because horizontal doesn't mean, doesn't matter all that much. It'd be great to have horizontal, but it's, it's a little nicer for this instance to have a little bit of vertical resolution more than the horizontal resolution. Now, for the video frame rate, we get about 9 frames per second, but it freezes every so often as there's a shutter that comes down, calibrates the image, and comes back up. So you get about 9 frames per second, and about every 10th frame, it, you lose a frame. But to be honest, it's pretty good for the price, especially whenever, in order to go much higher than this, you have to go to several thousand dollars. So it's a pretty nice camera in my opinion. God fucking damn it. This stupid little micro SD card keeps deleting my videos halfway through filming. So that's it. I mean, I've lost so many videos to this thing. Let's catch this in thermal and on camera. Anyway, so on to the Seek Thermal Camera itself. As you can see, I have it hooked up to an iPhone something. I don't know. I'm not a Mac person. I don't know what kind of iPhone it is. Now, with this add-on for the iOS version, it's actually kind of interesting because you can flip it around whichever direction you want. You can have it front-facing or rear-facing. But if you get the Android version, you can just add an extension cable to it and put it not even on the camera. So... It's kind of whatever one's best for you. For instance, because we can take it like off of here. And we can connect it on here. And then we can see back there. Unfortunately, though, the handle of the tripod's in the way. Oh, that's one thing I kind of did. Today I went to Radio Shack for one of their going out of business sales. And I picked up this GPS mount for $5. Then what I did was I, I took a heat gun and a bolt, the same size as the bolt on a tripod, and I heated up the bolt and screwed that bolt into the back of the plastic, melting it, making threads. So now I can just screw it into the into that thread that I made with that molten bolt, with that really hot bolt. The Seek Thermal Camera also comes with a nice little carrying container thing. It's pretty big though, so I'll probably just end up 3D printing something that's a little smaller to carry it. And it also is a pretty hard clasp too. It just fits right in there. I've been keeping it on my keychain because I've just been I've been looking at so many things with it, just so many things. Pretty much everything. <laughs> I've started just kind of mostly keeping it on my phone because I mean, it's not like I'm gonna use the phone for anything else. Now that we've pretty much covered a good amount of aspects about the camera itself, let's talk about a little bit about the video. Just like showing some stuff and whatever. Unfortunately in here, the temperature is all pretty uniform, and the temperature of my tricycle, as you can see here, has, well, it's pretty much equalized with the temperature of the room. This camera is a pretty narrow angle, so you have to be pretty far away. Like right now I'm about, oh, I'd say six or seven feet from my tricycle. You can easily see the trunk and the seat and stuff there. Let's move over to it. Now, of course, if I add like my hot hand inside there, it changes the contrast and the color palette of the entire video. It's kind of interesting. 
in here, you can see that that trunk right there is barely even noticeable, especially by the, next to my hand. That's a little bit, but yeah, it's doing really well. Let's open it up. I see a little bit in there, a little bit of warmth, but a little bit of warmth is okay. Because of course I did just travel like five miles on it, but it feels really cool to the touch. This camera is pretty sensitive, it can show uh, several degrees of difference, so that's pretty cool. Now it's actually pretty interesting what you can see on the video itself. Because like for instance, if you look at your face, of course you can remove the glasses that you've already seen. Can like draw on yourself if your hands are cold, but my hands are pretty much equalized with the temperature because it's actually a nice temperature in here. You can obviously tell how the heat dissipates through my hair. I have pretty long hair. You can see that pretty well, I hope. Now, if you open your mouth, and you, you really can't see a whole lot, it actually gets a little brighter because it's hotter inside there. But now, if you breathe in, you cool down your mouth so it actually shows up in the video. So you can do actually do that to your nose. Pretty interesting. I'm thinking it might be time for me to get myself a new icon for my YouTube channel. And I'm thinking something like this might be good. And there. It's kind of annoying because the video is upside down for me. But oh well. There, I, I think I think that would be a good picture. Something like that maybe. I'll take a picture later in that same pose. But yeah, I think I think having thermal imaging as like my profile picture on YouTube would be a, a good interesting little bit of a change. I don't know, because this is so cool. I love it. So please tell me what you think about my whatever profile picture I choose in thermal imaging. And if you have an issue with the quality of this camera, well, shut up unless you want to buy me a better camera. Because it's annoying whenever people tell me to, that to get a better camera and they don't want to fork over the cash to, to get a better camera. They want me to. So, well, be happy with it or don't watch it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!